God. Oh, I'm on. Well, welcome to the coffee house. It's again tonight. We're meeting from our secret location somewhere in Durham region. Um, next week we'll be back home with a brand new group, but I'm looking forward to tonight. We got a great, you know, we're going to have music tonight. And music is a wonderful thing, but if you're listening tonight, I want you to look for the message because there's going to be a message mixed into the music, something wonderful, something glorious, something that will really help you in the midst of this. Oh, what a time we live in. Thank goodness stage three is coming. I might be able to open the doors, but soon is my word right now. But anyways, getting back to what, you know, there's, there's questions out there. And if you've stumbled onto this, wonder this all about, there's questions people have like, is it always going to be this bad? Is there any future? Is there any hope? Is there any answers? Is there really a God? Tonight you're going to hear a message about the fact, yes, to all of those questions. There is a future. There is a God. He is the answer. There is a great hope. And it all comes from experiencing a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. He wants Amen. to save you. He wants to live in your heart. He wants to live out his life within you. He wants to give you something wonderful. So praise God. Look forward to hear this night. I always enjoy the group. I'll be sitting in the back corner for the rest of the night just kind of clapping my hands quietly. But you do at home. Get involved. Sing these songs because they're going to lift your spirits, lift your souls. And we'll see you again next week back at home at 419 Brock Street. God bless you all. Let's go, group. Amen.
Clay wasn't joking when he said we're in a secret location because if you tried to get in here right now, you'd have a difficult time. It's a rough road getting into the studio right now. They're uh, tearing up the sewers and the roads and reconstructing, and uh, it's a mess. But uh, we're thankful to be here. We're thankful for this opportunity to share some songs of encouragement with you tonight. Um, we are a new group um, to speak of. Um, different every time we come out but we're thankful that after the last time uh, we had a chance to do a podcast or a live cast for the coffee house uh, Jen who is Rick's daughter uh, was listening in the audience and she said I would love to be able to sing with you guys and so we've had one practice together and then some fooling around this morning or this afternoon in the studio to get things uh, down pat and uh, if we make some mistakes forgive us um, we know you do. We know you're patient with us, and uh, we hope that the songs will bring encouragement to you. Uh, let me just take a moment to let you know who is here right now, um, because when you do something like this, uh, it's it's a lot of people that get involved to put it all together. And those of you who are doing uh, video casts and podcasts for your churches know that it's not just a couple of people that get it put together. I think at our church south side here in Ajax, it takes about 16 people to put a podcast together. We've got quite a few people in the studio with us. We're all socially distanced, and most of them that aren't singing are wearing masks, so uh, we are observing those uh, social distances. But uh, let me introduce to you, first of all, some people that you're not seeing right now. Um, behind the scenes on the video, uh, we have Sharon Cracknell, who is Phil's wife, and um, she's in a new experience right now. And uh, my grandson Riley is beside her, uh, lending some technical assistance and uh, words of encouragement. Back on the soundboard, we have Warren Clark, and his wife is in the studio giving us moral support, and we're thankful for both of them. And then over on my right and your left, we have uh, Glenn, who is we played together a long time ago. And we're thankful for the opportunity to reunite and play some tunes together. And uh, Glenn and I have been friends for close to 30 years, so I'm um, so thankful to have Glenn on the bass. Very talented individual. He also plays the B3 what that Phil's uh, playing back there. Back here on the drums, we've got Rick. And uh, Rick and Phil together own this studio where we're uh, leading you tonight. And we are so happy to be able to use this facility. It's such an encouragement to us. Back behind me on the left is uh, John Dunham, and John, you are, he's no stranger to the coffee house. He's played with just about every group that arrives there <laughs> in one way or another on guitar or bass or singing, so he, he's always uh, at the coffee house, as you know. Back on the uh, B3 organ and giving us those sweet, sweet sounds, Mr. Phil Manning. And up here on vocals, giving us some harmony and also be doing some leads along the way is uh, Jen, her husband, is also here in the studio with us, and Rick's wife is here with us as well. So we do have some moral, moral encouragement tonight, and again, we hope that these songs are an encouragement to you. We're going to sing one that's uh, pretty new to us, and uh, maybe new to you as well. It's called At the Mention.
Feel free to give feedback online there, because I know that Clay's monitoring it, and uh, if he hears anything that's uh, not good or something we need to adjust, let him know, and uh, we'll, we'll do what we can to get it right. Okay, we're going to do a song called Christ Be Magnified. During this time when uh, we're experiencing uncertainty, um, it's still great to know that we have a God that's in control. And his name is going to be magnified, whether it's here on earth or whether we, when we get to heaven, every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess that Christ is Lord. Christ be magnified. The creation suddenly articulates with a thousand tongues to lift one cry And from north and south and east to west We hear Christ be magnified Where the whole earth echoing his eminence
song um, hopefully will speak to your hearts because we know that people are feeling a, a tremendous amount of anxiety uh, during this time. Um, people that don't mm -hmm. normally feel ne mental stress are feeling it right now. People have been isolated for, for too long and we're looking forward to the day when we're able to start to gather together again. Even our churches are missing the opportunity to have fellowship with each other and so this next song it, it talks about peace. And the peace that it talks about is the peace that can only come through the Savior, through Jesus Christ, through a relationship with him. And so Jen is going to sing this beautiful song. Uh, I love it, and uh, hopefully you'll love it by the end of the evening as well. lost at sea my enemies on every side and I'm tempted to run and hide the gentle whisper reaches out to me
God, you always keep me safe in your arms. I remember who you are. You're the God who's never, ever far away. And I will not be afraid. God, you always, you always keep me safe. You bring me peace that holds me when I'm broken. When the whole world is crashing down, I fall to my knees and breathe in your peace that holds me when I'm broken. Sweet peace that passes understanding. When the whole you are God alone. I breathe. I breathe you. I breathe you in. Take a deep breath and be still and know that you are God Another new song and another beautiful song. Uh, Hillsong has done this in a couple of different versions, but um, there's several Bible stories that talk to us about God's presence at a time when it's least expected. And right now, um, some of us probably feel like we're going through a fire, and we need that um, presence of the Lord with us during that fire. So we're going to do the beautiful song called Another in a Fire. There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire another in the waters holding back the seas and should I ever need reminding how you've been set free there is a cross that bears the where another died for me there is another Darkness as the 
his vows to him I can hear the roar in the heavens As the space between where I stand I can feel the ground shake beneath us As the prison walls came in And nothing stands between us Nothing stands between us And still is and will be through it all So come one day in the space between All the things unseen and this reckoning I know I will never be alone I know I will never be alone There'll be another in the fire Standing next to me There'll be another You've been to me. I'll count the joy from every battle. And I know that's where you'll be. John come up and speak, but um, this is another new one for the group, but a song that's become very familiar called Waymaker, and in those times when uh, we just don't know how to get through, he's there for us, showing us the way, he is the Waymaker.
working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. When they got miracle work and promise keeper. John at this time to bring us his message and uh, we're going to take a bit of a breather. as I was getting fired up here. Where are you going? Hey, there we are. Well, good to be here tonight and good to be fellowshipping one with another. And I don't have a mic, do I? I do. Thank you. There it is. Okay. Is that okay sideways like that? Okay, good. Well, last time I was here, uh, we left and, uh, uh, yeah, what's his name? Said to me there, uh, Rick, he said, John, he says, can you... Preach on something that's positive, something that's, uh, you know, it's not so hard on us. And tonight I want to speak for just a few moments on the topic of heaven. What will heaven be like? Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever given any thought to that at all? I think as we grow a little older that we start to think about it maybe a little more regularly. And uh, so heaven what will it be like? Well, we know that the scriptures teach us that uh, eye hath not seen nor ear heard the things that shall be in store uh, for those that love him. And so we really don't have a great idea of what heaven is really going to be like here in this flesh that we dwell in. But every once in a while in Scripture as you're reading it, a little crack in the door opens up and we get to see something that we've never seen before, a little glimpse of heaven. One of those verses is, that comes to mind is, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And so that's one of those little cracks in Scripture that gives us some hope, gives us some uh, joy and some celebration. But we know that heaven, as we look at it and as we think about it, that it will be a, a place of uh, celebration. And we know that God's going to wipe away all tears 
from our eyes. And we see that in Revelation 21, 4. The former things it also says in that passage will be remembered no more. How can we live in a place that's beautiful and a place where we're going to spend eternity in if we uh, can't forget some of the things that we may be guilty of in a day gone by or some of the things that the devil brings up to haunt us? They'll be all wiped away. Amen. Exciting. I'll tell you, I can hardly wait. You don't have to kill me tonight, but I can hardly wait to get there. And uh, so it's a place of happiness and joy and uh, a celebration, and the former things are remembered no more. And when this old world uh, is over, uh, we're going to go to a party, to a big party called the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. Now, you know, I feel sorry for people that have been getting married during the pandemic, haven't been able to have the parties and stuff the same way as they would if this wasn't here. But let me tell you, when we get to heaven, there's going to be a celebration. And it's not just going to be a Pentecostal celebration. It's not just going to be a Baptist celebration. Those things are going to be gone. We're all going to be seeing things the way God sees them because we're going to be perfect like he is. And we shall know even as we are known of him. So that's in Revelation 19.9 where we read that also that God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. Many of us have shed tears over things through the years and through the things that have happened maybe in our own life. Uh, maybe we have uh, situations in our families that are very difficult to deal with. And maybe there's been lots of tears, but there's a place called heaven that God wipes away all tears from our eyes. No more sorrow, no more heartache, no more worries about what's going on. A place of joy and a place where there will be this wonderful wedding party, the marriage supper of the Lamb, as we're united with Christ in heaven and there shall we be with him forever. It's a place of music as well. We see in Revelation chapter 5 that the st saints are standing before the throne with the angels singing glory to God in the highest. They're singing holy, holy, holy because the one God is three in one. Amen. This is why it's holy, holy God in the spirit, holy God the son, holy the father God, holy, holy, holy. And we will sing there the song of the redeemed. It's a place where we will be with God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, says this, The trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Are you looking forward to that? I'm looking forward to it. I know Glenn is. He says he's look, look, feeling pretty tired for his age, and I know he'd be looking for it too. I'm looking forward to it. Jesus, to be with him. We know the scriptures say that to be absent from the body and present with the Lord is far better. And it says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, we will ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. That's a Baptist saying, hallelujah. We can say that, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Then God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. The small things, the big things will all be wiped away. And there will be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. For the former things, as I said, are remembered no more. It'll be a place of complete knowledge. For it says in 1 Corinthians 13, 12, For now we see through a glass dimly or darkly, but then face to face we shall know even as we are known. We will have supernatural intelligence, I believe. But it'll be a place of rest. How many are looking for some rest? You know, you get sick of the rat race pace, don't you? And I get sick of the rat race pace some days too. Heaven's going to be a place of perfect peace, perfect rest in your glorified body where you'll feel no pain, no sorrow. We'll enter into, that king, into the kingdom, no pain, no disappointments. None of those things will enter in. And we will be with him face to face. 
So it will be a place of rest. We read in Romans 8 as well that I reckon that the present sufferings of this age are not worthy with the joy that shall be revealed in us. Joy. Joy that will be unspeakable, that we've never felt before this side of heaven. And he says, we, we think of the sorrow that we, we've gone through with, with people that die, that, oh, it's such a, it, it hurts your heart, or you've had a child that dies, and so many have had a child that has, has died, and, or there's been an accident of some sort, and they're gone but we read in Revelation 14, 13, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, that they may rest and their labors do follow them. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be the joy that shall be revealed in us. And then finally, it'll be a place of reunion. Old friends that you know that have died and gone on to be with Christ. I know my dad's up there and my mom's up there and I have uh, relations that are up there in heaven now. And we know of people that are in our churches that we have this uh, celebration of life. And they instantaneously, the spirit leaves the body on death and goes to be with the Lord Jesus in heaven. Parents and friends and relatives and sisters and brothers and children and child and babies. And, oh. and God says... This in uh, John eleven twenty five, he says, I am the resurrection. I am the life. He that were dead, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Hallelujah. That means none of us are ever going to die eternally. We are going to die for, in this body possibly, or we're going to be taken up to, in the clouds to meet him in the air. But we will never taste death. No more death. We shall never die. And then he says this finally in 1 Thessalonians 4.13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning the things that I'm talking about, basically, is what uh, Paul is saying in the book of Thessalonians. And I think he's saying that, and I use this as an opportunity to offer to anybody who may be uh, listening online and or somebody who's listening tonight who is never can never remember a time when they gave their life, they gave their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. A time that you can't remember ever giving your life to Christ and saying, Lord Jesus. And if, if you would like to do that tonight, pray this prayer with me as I pray it. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I need salvation, Lord God. I believe that, Jesus, you died for me on the cross. I believe, Lord Jesus, that there is a place in heaven for me if I receive you as Lord and Savior. And so I ask you to forgive me of my sin, to come into my heart, to come into my life, to make me a child of the living God. For we ask in Jesus' name, I trust that if you had opportunity, you have never done that, that you would do that tonight. If you didn't do it then, maybe you'll do it beside your bed. I want you to think about it. Absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, which is far better. Amen. God bless you tonight. Thank you. Uh, we don't know as a group um, how you got tuned into tonight um, because you may be on here live tonight. You may be getting this in a rebroadcast of a recording of this. It may be some years down the road that you actually see this video. But hopefully the message of the song and the message that John just gave us, um, there's a reason why God allowed you or even coerced you into watching this video tonight because there was a message there there's a message in the song that's intended for those especially those who are not walking with the Lord to have the opportunity to come into a relationship with Jesus Christ 
And the next song we're going to sing is called The Goodness of God. And trust me, um, I've been a Christian most of my life. I'm 60 years old now. I was saved when I was six years old, baptized when I was nine. I know what it means to follow in the goodness of God. I know what it's like to experience the goodness of God. And even in the times when it's difficult, you know that many of you that know us know that we nearly lost Riley, our grandson who's here with us tonight. He was nearly taken from us when he was less than two years old. He's a walking miracle. I've seen other miracles, and I'm sure that those who are here with me tonight who have experienced the Lord over a period of time know that there has been miracles happen in their own lives and happen in the people around them. God is still a God of miracles, and he is a good God. And Jen's going to lead us in this next song called Goodness of God.
As Clay said earlier, we're really looking forward to the time when we can get back together with you live because we really do miss an audience. We miss your voices. We miss the encouragement that you give us. Uh, we're doing the best that we can with the circumstances as they are, but we really are looking forward and keep praying that God is going to open up the doors that we can get back to being at the coffee house and uh, worshiping together for real. Awesome and 
over here man I I love it. <laughs> <laughs> man that sound <laughs> all right Jen's gonna lead us in another one called who you say I am um, in this world um, people try to take away our identities especially as Christians they want to shut us down they want to take away our testimony and uh, we know that when we're in Christ he is who we s he says we are. We are his. Who you say I am. Who am I that the highest king would wear? But he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Free at last, free at last, he has raised me his grace runs deep while I was a slave to sin Jesus died for me yes he died
a child of God there's a process that begins and it starts the moment we were saved continues until we leave this earth and during that time he's building our life as believers he's bringing experiences into our lives he's bringing people into our lives that cause us to build in our relationships and our relationship with him we're going to sing the song called build my life
song kind of leads into the next one because in the world we face temptations of all kinds um, even more so now than ever in our lives with the introduction of internet and um, social media and everything else the world wants us to walk with them and this song talks about the fact that we shouldn't be walking with the world we should be walking in the world we should be introducing people to Jesus Christ but ultimately we need to walk with him the song is called Walk With You. This one, we have uh, it's a new one. We've only played it a couple of times together, so if it takes us a bit to get into it, please understand, and uh, we'll do the best we can. Walk With You. It calls me and it tempts me and it wants me but I'm not giving in still it taunts me still it haunts me but it leaves me empty in the end the way is clear True, and it's running with the devil. I'm gonna walk with you. The road less traveled as it's bad. It tempts me, 
and it wants me. Oh, but I'm not giving in. We serve a Lord who's great. John was talking about the fact that uh, the time is coming when we're all going to kneel our kneel before our Lord and worship Him, and He is great. We're going to sing the song "Great Are You, Lord."
note to our last song. We closed our last concert with uh, this song. Actually, we've done a couple of concerts where we've closed it. Because as we go, we want to leave you with a blessing. And uh, this song is a beautiful song taken right from Scripture. It's a powerful song. It repeats a lot of times. But as Rick said earlier, sometimes it takes a lot of repetition to get it hammered home to us just how much he wants to bless us. And we're going to sing the song, The Blessing. Oh
gracious to you. The Lord turned his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time that you've allowed us to be here together tonight. Us as a music group, those who are in the audience around us, around the world, those who may hear this two, three years from now, we ask that you would use the message of this night, the message of John's word, the message of these songs to bless hearts. Father, may tomorrow, for those of us who are listening to this live, may tomorrow find us in your house, worshiping you with your people. We look forward and we're excited for the day when we can return to the coffee house and when we can return to our churches and we can worship and fellowship with our brothers and sisters. And for those who are not part of the kingdom, we want to welcome you. Those of you who made decisions tonight, we want to welcome you to the family of God. May you find a place to worship tomorrow. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>